In this video, I will discuss how balancer chromosomes can be used to maintain a mutation in a population of flies through generations. Fruit flies are diploid, meaning their genomes are made up of two copies of each chromosome, one that they inherited from their mother and one that they inherited from their father. These two chromosomes are said to be homologous because they carry the same genes, but they came from different parents. As you can see, the fruit fly genome has four pairs of homologous chromosomes, two sex chromosomes, and a pair of chromosome 2, a pair of chromosome 3, and a pair of chromosome 4. Chromosomes 2, 3, and 4 are called autosomes. Say you have generated a desired mutation in a fly, and you want to be able to maintain that mutation in the progeny of that fly for many generations to come. If you have two flies that are heterozygous for a recessively inherited mutation, and they are left alone to multiply over time, they could potentially be producing more heterozygotes, or flies that are homozygous, not carrying the mutation. Over time, you might end up with a population that doesn't contain the mutation at all, especially given your small starting population of flies with the mutation of interest, and the fact that your mutation could have a lower fitness than the wild-type genotype. On top of that, if the mutation is recessive, you would not be able to tell these two flies apart without genetic analysis. So what can we do to make sure we don't lose this mutation? Mating your fly with the desired mutation with a fly that carries balancer chromosomes creates a generation of flies, some which are heterozygous for a balancer chromosome paired with the chromosome carrying your desired mutation. Once you have this fly, the properties of the balancer chromosome will allow you to maintain this mutation stored over the balancer chromosome as a stable stock. Then you'll be able to work with this mutation in your lab over a long period of time without concern of losing the mutation in successive generations. Logically, we know that if you are mating two flies that are heterozygotes, carrying both the balancer chromosome and the mutated chromosome of interest, you have three potential offspring genotypes. A heterozygote that carries the mutated chromosome and the balancer chromosome, a homozygote carrying two mutated chromosomes, and a homozygote carrying two balancer chromosomes and no mutated chromosome. Balancer chromosomes are handy because they allow you to easily pick out the heterozygote without having to do any genetic analysis. Balancer chromosomes have three characteristics that allow scientists to maintain this mutation over generations. First, balancer chromosomes contain multiple nested inversions. This just means that portions of the chromosome have been reversed due to the chromosome breaking and rearranging itself. This property prevents the balancer chromosome from recombining with its homologue, the mutated chromosome, during meiosis. This means that over time, crossing over will not occur and the mutated chromosome will not be altered in meiosis. So the balancer chromosome makes sure that the mutation stays on the original chromosome intact through generations. The second important feature of balancer chromosomes is that they contain dominant markers that show up in the flies that carry the balancers. This means that you can easily pick out flies that carry the balancer chromosome and flies that don't just by looking at them. In flies, the dominant marker could be something like eye color or hair length. Two popular examples of dominant markers on balancer chromosomes are TM6, which creates a tubby body phenotype, and curly O, that creates a curly wing phenotype. The third important feature of balancer chromosomes is that they contain alleles that are lethal when carried homozygously. This means that a fly that carries two balancer chromosomes will not survive. So if we start with a line of flies that is heterozygous, carrying a balancer chromosome marked with curly O and the mutated chromosome of interest, we look at their F1 progeny. We will not have any flies that are homozygous for the balancer chromosome because any flies that received both balancer chromosomes and fertilization will have died. This is due to the fact that the balancer chromosome contains alleles that are lethal when carried homozygously. 
We also know that any flies that do not carry the dominant phenotype associated with the balancer chromosome do not carry the balancer chromosome. This is because the balancer chromosome carries dominant markers that show up in the phenotype. So this fly does not have curly wings and therefore doesn't carry the balancer chromosome in its genotype. So now we are left with the flies that carry the dominant marker phenotype. These are the flies that are heterozygous. They show signs of carrying the balancer chromosome and they are also carrying the mutated gene of interest. We are sure that the mutation is still carried in these flies on the chromosome of interest because the balancer chromosome has suppressed crossing over during meiosis, keeping that mutation firmly in place on the original chromosome. So there you have it. Balancer chromosomes are a great tool for helping maintain a stable fly stock carrying a mutation of interest over many generations.